and welcome to this View from the IMF video series preview. I'm Kimberly Long, Asia Editor of The Banker, and I'm joined today by Joy McKnight, Editor of The Banker. Thanks for joining me today, Joy. Thanks so much, Kim. Looking ahead to the conference that's going to be taking place in October, how has the IMF and the World Bank adapted to the issues around the pandemic? Well, I think they responded really well, actually. They uh, responded quickly. They got a lot of funds out the door very quickly to help uh, countries that were in trouble, um, uh, you know, and they really stepped up their game to respond to the crisis. So the World Bank, as of June, this June, um, it has made available um, $160 billion uh, to 100 developing countries to support the health, the social, the um, economic shocks that came with the pandemic, including financing the vaccine distribution um, and purchasing. Um, the IMF, on the other hand, has provided $117 billion in new financing to 85 countries, which is pretty impressive. It has uh, given debt service relief to 29 uh, low-income nations, and it threw all the tools that it has at its fingertips um, at the crisis. So there's rapid credit um, facility, rapid financing instrument, like I said, the debt service suspension initiative, um, and much, much more. But of course, in August, it also released the new special drawing rights allocation of about $650 billion, with about $275 billion going to emerging um, and developing countries and low-income countries or are receiving about $21 billion. Um, obviously, that brings up uh, the sort of the issue, and many people are calling for the bigger economies because it's all based on uh, GDP in terms of what they get in the special drawing rights. So they're calling on the bigger economies to really reallocate some of their SDRs to the low income and developing countries um, so that, uh, you know, uh, more of the money can actually help with them, the ones that are most in need. Um, so, yeah, so it's, a, it's been a good response, I think. So moving on now from looking at what's happened over during the pandemic towards what's actually going to take place during the conference. So what do you think are going to be the key discussion points this year? Well, I have to say, I think COVID-19, the pandemic and having an equitable sort of resolution of what's going on, I think that's still going to be top of mind this year again. I think there'll be also a lot of discussion around that sort of building back better, creating a more green, a more um, uh, inclusive and resilient economy going forward. Um, I think another thing that could be talked about is really the pace of change in terms of interest rates that are being put forward from the, the bigger economies in the world. The global tax policy might also come up at one point. Uh, and dare I say it, central bank digital currencies actually might come into play as well, because there's been a lot of initiatives happening around the world with regards to that. And another topic that's always been really important over the last few years is ESG. And what do you think is going to be happening there? Is there going to be any change of focus? Well, it's interesting. Over the past year, I would say, there's been a lot more focus on the SG. So moving, uh, not, not completely leaving behind environmental, but moving, focusing more on the social and governance aspect of things. But of course, we have COP26 coming up in the, at the end of October, beginning of November. And I think that's, again, shifted a lot of people's attention back that way. It's a huge issue in terms of climate change. And now there's a lot of initiatives. Mark Carney has put forward the Net Zero Banking Alliance. There's a task force on climate-related uh, financial disclosures. There's a task force on scaling voluntary carbon markets. There's a network for greening the financial system. So there's a lot of resources and time and effort being put into these initiatives that really can make a change. Um, and also this whole sustainability element will also be a hot topic at the Institute of International Finance Conference, which runs alongside the IMF and World Bank annual meetings. Thanks very much, Joe. It sounds like there's an awful lot to be discussed this year at the conference. And you can keep up to date with our um, view from the IMF series, which will be released in time for the conference taking place from 11th to the 17th of October.